Apple MacBook Air, he MacBook Air reboots as a thinner, lighter, more expensive laptop. Apple's MacBook Air has gotten a much needed reboot, keeping the name, but changing just about everything else, both outside and in. That means a new 8th gen Intel Core i5 CPU, more RAM and SSD options, a higher res retina display, and the move to USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. And while it's still called the MacBook Air, this new version might as well be called the MacBook Pro Lite, because that's essentially what it is. For most of its 10 plus year life, the classic MacBook Air was the default laptop for pretty much everyone, from college students to creative types to startup entrepreneurs. For many years, I called it the single most universally useful laptop you could buy. But over the years, the competition moved to higher res displays, thin screen bezels, bigger touch pads, regular component upgrades, and thinner and lighter bodies. While this reimagined MacBook Air fixes almost all of the previous design's issues, it adds a couple of its own. It's a much better fit with the rest of the current Mac design sensibility, larger than the 12-inch MacBook, smaller than the 13-inch Pro, and much different from the classic Air, which Apple is still selling, at least for now. That means the long-standing design, with its thick screen bezels, smallish touchpad, deep keys and multiple ports is gone. If anything, the new Air looks and feels like a half-step between the 12-inch MacBook and the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Its price has jumped up to join the rest of the MacBooks as well. For most of its life, the Air was $999. Not cheap, but a reasonably achievable luxury, especially for a rock-solid laptop that could last years. The new starting price is $1,199. £1,199, 1849 Australian dollars, which is a tough blow for generations raised on the idea of getting that first MacBook for under a grand. Right now, it's only $100 less than the 12-inch MacBook or 13-inch basic MacBook Pro, so there's some price versus features math to do. With each laptop excelling in a different area, and only $100 separating their base models, there won't be one correct answer for everyone. That said, this new Air is the safe middle ground between the two extremes. Picking one up, it immediately feels lighter and smaller than the current Air, which I'm intimately familiar with. At 2.7 pounds, 1.25 kilograms, and about 15 millimeters thick, it's actually fairly average when it comes to 13-inch laptops. Some similar systems get down under 10 millimeters, but at the expense of battery, features and processing power. As it is, the new MacBook Air is firmly in the mainstream of slim laptops, but not leading the pack. One bit of catch-up is in the screen design, which cuts the thick bezel border surrounding it by about half and adds an edge-to-edge -edge glass overlay. It's a sharper, more modern look, and a long overdue upgrade. In this new Air, you get the latest version of the butterfly keyboard, with a new membrane underneath to help keep dust from gumming up the keys. To our knowledge, the Air and the Touch Bar versions of the Pro have this version, whereas other MacBooks have a previous version. It takes a period of adjustment to get used to the subtle tactile feedback, but once you do get used to it, it's fine for even long-form typing. But yes, you may never grow to love it. The payoff is that the new Air also includes a much bigger touchpad, of the same force touch style as on other MacBooks. That means it doesn't have a diving board hinge on the back, and instead uses four corner sensors to register clicks, allowing the body to be thinner. Will diehards take this change hard? They might, but that old keyboard was never as great as you remember.